today is gonna be a little bit of a different video I guess because I was originally gonna upload another video on Friday but maybe that's just a little little bit too late so I decided to just record one today it's gonna be a little different than usual because well you probably already guessed that this is not going to be an amateur video so today I want to basically go over how I almost got a world record because well I wanted to do that for a while now maybe a couple months or something but I always recorded different videos so today I guess I will go over that I'm gonna explain a little bit about what I did, how I did it and yeah that's it pretty much so this is actually one of my first videos I uploaded I think it's like uploaded 10 months ago 10 11 almost a year it's in a game called Hydro Thunder Hurricane still one of my favorite games I don't play it that much anymore but I used to play this all the time so let's actually watch this video then I'll kind of explain what I did and why I did it pretty much I turned down the volume a bit because it's it's pretty loud this thing uh, so well the video starts with me resetting of course so what you want to do here is as soon as he says go you want to on the I play this on the Xbox so right trigger if you press it at the right time you jump forward and get a little boost and what you'll see me do throughout the entire video here basically is cutting corners very very close because that will save me like probably one hundredth of a second but if you add that up in the like at the end of the run no it's pretty significant so this is the first I don't want to say tricky spot but you gotta watch out you want to make sure you don't hit any of these walls because it will slow you down it will be pretty awkward if you hit them so just I want to say just reset and this right here is actually where 90 I want to say like 90 percent of my runs died this part right here as you can see the uh well some ice fell into the water causes giant waves the thing is that that ring is basically going to be underwater if you try to uh well keep boosting so what you want to do is you want to wait i waited a little bit so that i could like boost right as the water is going down to hopefully go through the ring because most of the times I fly over it I don't get the timing right so this is basically where all of my attempts will fail that's basically the only actual difficult part of the run here now you really don't want to stop boosting no matter what right here it's pretty easy there's a little bit of a invisible wall there to the left but it's you can avoid it pretty easily now right here that you can take a shortcut right there through the uh, the little gap here but every time you miss a ring on this difficulty you lose two seconds and all of your boost goes away so it's really not worth taking any shortcuts so I guess I want to say we're about halfway through this track now this the next ring you can actually overshoot if you jump here you might fly so far as you actually go over that ring right there now there's another part where it's kind of difficult to actually go through the ring this one right here uh, as you can see I barely hit the ring I sometimes don't even boost that to make sure I go through it but I guess I felt like boosting this time you'll actually never really see me uh, well, uh, not boost except for the part in the beginning with the uh, ice that fell into the water and there's another part coming up where I had to well, let go of the boost button and just break so we're coming up kind of on the end of the track I don't really want to say the end because we're not, it's not that close yet right here I actually didn't let go of the boost there's no way to make that turn without hitting the wall but I hit it on an angle that doesn't really matter too much now there are a couple of spots in this 
track that are basically dependent on RNG, like the one where I barely clip the rings, basically, like, are you going fast enough? There's no way to really calculate if you're going slow enough, fast enough to not fly over it. And here, this might be a little tricky, the things here have, like, the hitboxes are a little large and sometimes you might run into an invisible wall. This is arguably the easiest part of the track. Just keep boosting and make sure you don't crash. And at the very end, this part right here. To the right is, this is, well, very, very annoying. There's like an invisible wall here. The hitbox is a little too large, so... I was like on a world record pace and then I hit the invisible wall. This is like where 5% of my runs die, so it's not too bad, but once I when I hit it, I, well, I get pretty mad because I'm about to improve my personal best, maybe get a world record even, then I hit an invisible wall and that's pretty much it. I even hit one right there, but it doesn't, it didn't matter too much. It, I think if I didn't hit that, it might have been third or second. I not entirely sure, but I do think the person in first place is definitely cheating because as you see, I'm going to play the words on that, I'm actually fourth placed with just over two minutes. As you can see, if I didn't hit the wall, I might have been third, maybe second, but to me it's clear that the person in first is cheating. He's almost like two seconds faster than the person in second place and I drove perfectly except for that last part where I hit the wall but you cannot save three seconds on that and his name is grayed out I don't know if that means his times are invalid or if he got banned but it's pretty interesting in my opinion I do have another track where I'm like 12th or 13th but that one is heavily like influenced by RNG a lot of huge ways that push you around. But I guess that's it for this video. Uh, I don't really have anything else to talk about. So until next time, have a damn good day.